Hello, are they working? Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to our workshop meeting tonight. To get our meeting started, if we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Great, thank you. Um, I'll do the roll call this evening. We have Otto. Here. Thomas is absent with notice. Westover is absent with notice. Ingstrom is here. Daka. Here. Braun. Here. And check. Here. Great, thank you. Um, that takes us on to adopt the balance of the agenda. Um, are there any ad additions or deletions from anyone? If anyone doesn't mind, I would like to add back on our another um, discussion we had voted on it once before but now that I'm looking around during the summer months and seeing all the um, different roundabouts and we had voted to go with the soft landscaping and one maybe just chat about maybe we should go with the hardscape does anyone have a problem with adding that and talking about that tonight uh, I, I, as long as we're not voting on it I, I don't want to add anything on that I can't study and read about I don't want to just put it on there and vote that's my opinion Okay, well, we'll put it on there um, to talk, and then maybe because we'll see I don't what know, happens I don't know at that time. Much, I don't know how much money we're talking about. I don't know what kind of commitment we're talking about. I don't know anything, so I'm not going to vote on something I don't know anything about. Right. All right. Uh, so um, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the amended agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. Put that as number five as our agenda item. Should you guys discuss hardscape? from our own about. So motion for on the um, amended supported. agenda, thank you. Uh, Ingstrom motion and Chick supported. Those in favor? Oh. Uh, aye. What are we voting on? The agenda. After it's added on? Yeah, I've added on number five, so a motion to approve the amended agenda. Thank you. Okay, those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion passes, thank you. Right, that takes us on to our first call to the public. This is an opportunity for anyone to get up, share your thoughts. Um, we do remind you that this is not a question and answer session. The board cannot respond to your thoughts. And we do limit you to three minutes. Do we have any speakers here this, this evening? Oh, come on up. <laughs> uh, call the th okay, Mary, come on up. Mary, D Mary Devlin, nine two one one Brookside Drive. Um, I'm up here because. Get my paperwork out. At my age, I have to write everything down so I don't forget anything. Okay. Number one, at the Northfield Township Board meeting on July 12th, the Northfield neighbors were doing what they have done for months, which is verbally bash the board, the planning commission, and Northfield Township manager. But at this meeting, they also specially went after the township treasurer, Kathy Braun, because of her article in the July issue of The Current. What amazes me is that they can dish it out, but when they are criticized, they don't like it. I would like to remind them that not everyone in this township has a short memory when it comes to the Northfield neighbors. Number two, the other day we received a card in the mail addressed to local poster customer sent by NN.TEC. I'm sure you can figure out what that NN stands for, but I will tell you in a minute. They had a partial list of candidates running for office on the front of the card. On the back was more complaining about the township. For instance, about the new boardroom, which by the way is more professional, the lighting is better, and the acoustics are better. Another issue was the tax abatement for the new company that Howard has worked so hard to have here. Um, and they are only guessing at the number of jobs to be available. The list goes on with negative remarks about 3% of townships having managers. They failed to indicate that a large number of townships have a population of less than 6,000 population. 
The reason to have a township manager means more financially efficient. And this township was close to default about eight years ago. Um, and need I need to say who was on the board at that time. And now we are financially sound, to coin a phrase. Getting back to what NN.TEC stands for is Northfield Neighbors Today Election Committee, whose treasurer is David Gordon and Susan Schenk is record keeper. My thought is this. Why had they not filed their financial disclosure by the deadline, which was last Friday? So I'm just asking everybody, please be careful when you go to the polls and know whom you're voting for. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other speakers this evening? Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Anyone else? Our next speaker. Hello, everyone. My name is David Gordon. Uh, I'm with Northfield Neighbors. And to answer Mary's question, I screwed up the deadline on filing, and I filed this afternoon instead of Friday and paid a $50 fine as a result. So you can find all the documents online if you wish in terms of who's financing Northfield Neighbors Dot Today PAC. Uh, I'd encourage everybody to vote on August 2nd because the positions of clerk and treasurer will be decided next Tuesday and I believe we need some new people who ask questions and make better decisions. Madam Supervisor, again at the last meeting you continued spreading lies about me, about Northfield Neighbors, and about our website Northfield Neighbors Dot Today. Unfortunately, you were joined by the treasurer, clerk, and manager. You say that Northfield Neighbors is disgusting and makes you sick, to quote you, and then said, of course, you've never actually visited the site. If you had the guts to deal with even a le the least amount of criticism and visited the site, you'd see that every single fact is documented. There are links from every story to the minutes of these meetings and the videos from them. There might be editorializing that you dislike, but the facts are the facts, and the residents can check them out for themselves. It's not an opinion that the treasurer and this board lost $450,000 by selling bonds. It's a fact. And here's the problem. Apparently, you think the taxpayer's job is to be cheerleaders. If we so much as criticize your actions, we get attacked for it. And maybe that's why so few people ever show up on a regular, uh, at these regular meetings. Northfield Neighbors Dot Today is acting as the watchdog of this community, keeping the residents informed about your actions, which is important and an honored American tradition. Usually it's the local paper that takes on this role, but the Courant didn't bother to report the $450,000 loss. What the Courant did was get you all elected, and now it's telling the voters that everything is just hunky-dory and we should re-elect you, all of you. What makes me sick is seeing the newspaper in bed with the politicians. Madam Supervisor, here's what you said at the last meeting, quote, Mr. Gordon, I heard you get up here and you stood here and you said I will stop the Whitmore Lake Special Assessment District at all costs because it's another tool out of my toolbox. And once again, you will do anything to hurt anyone in this township for your own gain. That's a direct quote from you, madam. Number one, I never said it. I know I didn't say it because I've never even thought it. And I checked the tapes of all those SAD meetings and confirmed it. It's not there. Plus, it doesn't even make any sense. But it is ugly. And that's how you treat folks that disagree with you. That toolbox reference is from an online posting that I never wrote, but which makes me look bad, and which you decided to send out to every member of the Planning Commission and the Board of Trustees. I have a copy of it. It's dated July 15, 2014. First, you sent it to the township manager, asking if he would like to distribute it. He, smartly, he refused. Unfortunately, he didn't counsel to you to maybe check out whether I actually wrote that. I'd see you over it, but it's not worth the trouble. Last, you also said that I will hurt anyone for my gain. I don't know what gain you're talking about. I donated, a, donated everything I ever made when I was serving as a trustee for four years back to this community. You're the one collecting $50,000. And I will hurt anyone? The only thing I've ever done is protect my home and my neighborhood and alert the residents to unwanted zonings and attacks on the master plan. You know, the document that you didn't participate in writing and that you probably haven't even read. You need to stop lying because you're mixing up your lies. 
the community deserves better than this. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Oh, come on up. Chuck, is it where we on? Good evening, my name is Ton Belliger, and I'm happy to be here this evening. Um, regarding the agenda items tonight, we've got People's Express, the Fire Department Capital Improvement Plan, Main Street Sidewalk Project, repaving of the parking lot at 75 Barker. My only concern is about always about spending. I tend to like to go back to the issue of spending. Um, I would like to make sure that these issues, the agenda items, that we can do our best to keep them at a balance so that as we increase spending on these different issues, maybe we can decrease in places that are perhaps we don't feel are as important at this time resulting in hopefully a budget neutral situation without a tax increases. So this is pretty much what I'm getting at. So regarding the People's Express, that's a great idea. I understand it'll get a lot of support. I just would like it to not cost, obviously, us anymore. So if we're gonna add to the increasing People's Express by any chance, decrease somewhere else you know, without raising taxes. And that goes for the other items, like anything that we're doing in the township. But that's about it. I wish everybody who's running the best of luck and uh, everybody get out there and vote August 2nd. And uh, I wish everybody well and have a wonderful evening. Thanks so much. Thank you. Is there anyone else for call to the public this evening? All right. Uh, any board member comments at this time? Go ahead, Wayne. Uh, yes, I'd like to know from Howard uh, in the past when, when uh, we voted on to have a limit on these uh, presentations. I want to know if Howard mentioned it to whoever is having this and what is the limit tonight on this presentation. We voted to have that done. Howard has ignored it right along. So did, did you counsel somebody on how long this is for? How long is it, Howard? I said try not to let it go. I can't hear you, Howard. I told the gentleman try not to let it go over 15 minutes. Thank you very much. I'd like the board to authorize that if the gentleman goes over 15 minutes that it's not an issue. Well, I'd like you to pay attention to what we voted on. That's what we voted on. So, uh, you know, but you never, you never go this far after we voted on it. So I, I, think, it's, I think it's important. I, I come I, here to a, I've been here already, an hour already uh, for meetings. Uh, I, I think it's fair to have a time limit on these things. Thank you. I'm sure everyone will do their best, but um, I don't think that's something to spoil such a wonderful um, presentation that's going to happen, okay? If they happen to go over to 15 minutes, we'll be fine. I didn't hear you. What was that? If they happen to go over 15 minutes, I'm sure we'll be fine. Well, I, I would like to have a vote on it then because I won't be fine on it. Any correspondence and announcements? Um, the only uh, correspondence announcement that I have is that um, the uh, MDOT has requested a, um, uh, a uh, MDOT is requested to purchase right away from us for the US 23 project related to the Van Curler property. As soon as um, we have ownership of the Van Curler property and also, and I'm still waiting on it and I'm not happy as to um, the delay, but as soon as I have the uh, survey, um, then we'll begin entertaining the issue of the uh, uh, MDOT request for the right of way. It's a pretty uh, insignificant piece um, that won't impact uh, anything that we're looking to do. Um, so I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Uh, will, will it be a fair price, Howard? Uh I mean, would it be money, or I mean, if they want the property, are they going to pay for it? Or yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other correspondence or announcements? No. All right. Well, uh, our first presentation of the evening is a flag uh, presentation ceremony from the Vale Drafts family to the fire department. We have Je Deputy Chief Bishop here, Mr. Bill Wagner, and. Bill Burton in the audience and we can get started and thank you for everyone for coming it's nice to see everyone's fresh faces here New come faces. on up Mr. Burton um, as most of you probably know uh, a couple of weeks ago we lost a longtime member of the community icon in the community 
um, and a 25-year-plus uh, veteran of the fire department, uh, Val Dreffs, passed away. And uh, so the, and most of the family is here, as you see. Um, a well-respected man in the community, did a lot of good things for the people in the community. So it is tradition, sometimes uh, they'll ask the fire department for some assistance during the funeral. And so we, we helped uh, the morning of the funeral, leading the procession from the funeral home um, up there in Hamburg, all the way out to St. Pat's Church. And then um, during the service and during the procession over to the cemetery, we put our ladder truck up with a large flag like you've seen us do during the 4th of July events. Um, it's just something we do for firefighter funerals and retired firefighter funerals. So uh, Mr. Burton here noticed that our flag was a little tattered and faded and, and actually offered to purchase a new fire department for the flag and we will certainly gratefully accept that flag and fly it with uh, uh, very proud in, in honor of Val Drops. So, Mr. Burton, you want to say a couple words? Sure. Thank you very much. And I'd really like to just say thank you to the Northfield Township Fire Department first responders for Val's service. It was just an awesome site that you guys provided for not only the community, but for the family. And uh, in Val's memory, because of the shape of the flag, it was a little bit discolored and stuff. I thought, what a great thing to have there for Val and hopefully it won't get used a lot. Right. Uh, but it's something that I think Val would be very proud of and I'm sure his family would be also. So on behalf of Val and his family, I want to donate to this to the County Party Department. Thank you so much. Thank you, and if you want to present it, say. And just a real quick history, we've never been able to afford to purchase a brand new flag, and so that flag that we actually had there had been donated to us, and um, Shelly Manning actually repaired that flag for us so that it was somewhat presentable. And so um, this is, and, and previous funer funerals before that flag, we actually borrowed flags from area departments. So it's, I'm very proud that we'll have one for the Northfield Township Fire Department, and we will get a little something that when we're displaying that, that, that is in honor of Al Draft. So again, thank you very much. Thank you so much. That takes us on to our next presentation of the evening, and that is the Michigan Broadband Cooperative. Welcome. I want to be very respectful of everybody's time, so I will uh, begin speaking while the projector warms up. Uh, thank you, everybody, for taking the time to uh, speak with me tonight. And I'll say I'm, I'm blissfully ignorant of politics in this part of Washtenaw County, but what, what I can tell is that everyone in this room is very passionate about your community. And I, th I think that's really amazing. I've been to a lot of uh, township meetings, and the passion here tonight is uh, more than I'm used to seeing, so congratulations on that. So uh, my name is Ben Feynman. I uh, represent the uh, Michigan Broadband Cooperative. I am also a Washtenaw County resident in Linden Township, which is three townships to the west, and this is not the right presentation. Um, the uh, Michigan Broadband Cooperative is a uh, nonprofit, all-volunteer grassroots organization, and I think it's important to understand where we're coming from in that we're not trying to sell anybody anything. We're trying to address a problem that we identified in our own community in the western part of Washtenaw County, which is the lack of broadband connectivity. So our nonprofit mission is to build community-controlled broadband infrastructure for underserved areas of Michigan. And I know most of you can't see the presentation, but this is the, uh, the list of our board members. and. Um, as you can see, we're, we're residents of various townships throughout Washtenaw County and actually 
one township in Jackson County, and we're all just uh, residents trying to make something happen. And this is my motivation. You know, people ask me why I devote my time to this. It's really for my kids. And my kids today don't have broadband at home. And I know once they get to be school age, it's really going to become necessary for them. And so, you know, everybody, everybody has a secret motivation. This is my secret motivation. So that's what I'm here for. So uh, I'm going to go really fast through these slides because there's a lot of content. What is broadband? Um, broadband is the way that you connect to the internet. And it's not just for uh, entertainment. It's not just a luxury service anymore. It's really essential to our, uh, as essential to our way of life as electricity was 100 years ago. And it's, um, there are a lot of main things that people need it for. The thing we hear over and over in our communities is the homework gap. And so uh, students who need to have broadband to complete their homework assignments, uh, if they don't have it, they end up in the parking lot at McDonald's or at the Chelsea Library or wherever they can find free Wi-Fi at 10 o'clock at night so they can upload their homework assignment. We hear over and over that people have trouble selling their homes when the buyers find out that there's no broadband available. And we've done some studies in this regard. It turns out homes without broadband are actually valued on average 20% less than homes that do have broadband. And so that's a significant hardship for those people who don't have broadband. And it's just a basic quality of life issue, not just for people with kids, not just for home equity. Um, we hear from uh, seniors in our communities who have um, adult children and grandchildren and might like to video chat and Skype with their grandchildren and they can't do it because they don't have broadband. Or they go see their uh, medical professionals and they get sent home with uh, electronic medical records that they can't access from home because they don't have broadband. So it's, it's really important for um, people, all kinds of different people. And so where are we now in terms of broadband? I, moved from uh, Superior Township, where I had Comcast Cable, and at that time I didn't realize there were people in Washtenaw County that did not have broadband. And if you have broadband here, you probably might not have thought about that there are people in Northfield Township that don't have broadband. And this is, this is surprising to a lot of people. Because there's all these service providers available in Washtenaw County. But, um, and if you look at Northfield Township in particular, this is a coverage map maintained by an uh, a organization called Connect Michigan. If you take DSL and cable and cellular and satellite, you have 100% coverage in Northfield Township. So, you know, why should we even talk about this? The first issue is uh, anybody with a cellular data plan knows about data caps. And data caps are this thing where they charge you for how much you use the service. And if you're trying to run your home on a data cap service, I won't go through this in particular, but if you try to do normal things that people like to do with the internet, it's going to cost you over $6,000 a month in data overages. So cellular and satellite are not really viable solutions. If you take that away, then we're left with uh, cable and DSL. And DSL is, is certainly better than nothing, but the, uh, the FCC defines broadband as speeds of 25 megabits or more. DSL doesn't even make that. So DSL is no longer fast enough to be considered broadband. And there are studies to support the need for this uh, 25 megabit threshold and also studies that show how bandwidth needs are increasing at a rapid pace year over year. So if we take away DSL, then we're just left with cable. So Northfield Township still looks pretty good when it comes to cable coverage. You have this part in the southwest that shows is not covered. It turns out this uh, coverage map is widely overreported because the data comes from the providers themselves. And we've done uh, some studies in Dexter Township. So this is the coverage reported in Dexter Township. When we actually did the study, this is what it actually looks like. The red is the air are the areas that uh, were reported as being covered that aren't actually covered. So I'm willing to bet the Northfield Township coverage is actually a lot worse than the, uh, the state map shows. And so how do we get coverage for those people who don't have it? Well, the, the easiest thing to do would be to get the big carriers to come and deploy it. And so you know we've talked to them, and they're just not going to do it because they're for-profit companies. They need a return on investment that the population densities in these rural areas cannot provide. So they aren't going to help us. 
So that's why in the western part of the county, we came to the conclusion that we needed this grassroots effort. If we want this done, we we're gonna have to do it ourselves as citizens. And so if we're gonna do something, the technology to, to deploy is fiber optic, fiber to the home. And the main thing here is speed and future proofing. Um, I know many of you can't see the graph, but fiber is orders of magnitude faster than any of the other technologies. If you've heard of Google Fiber, this is the same technology Google uses. Google Fiber is not coming here, but we can still build the same technology that they use. Uh, there are examples of Michigan communities who have done exactly this. Seaboing, Michigan, built fiber to the home for every, uh, every household in their village, uh, 1,700 residents, and they now offer gigabit service to uh, any household that wants it. And this is not a, uh, a unique thing to Michigan. There are over 450 communities around the country who have done these kinds of municipal fiber optic deployments. And so we're, we're not trying to do something new and crazy. We're doing something that's becoming more and more common throughout the United States. People are, are taking action and taking things into their own hands. So what's the process if we actually want to do this? So the first step in where we are in Northfield Township is assessing community need and support. Um, basically, in other areas, we've done surveys to determine if people are significantly lacking in broadband, if they want to see something done about it as a community. Um, we have had contacts from residents in Northfield, so I know there is a need here, but we haven't done any surveys, so I can't tell you how much. We have. You have. We, 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 we were part of Gretchen's initial. Oh, you were? Yes. Well, I'm sorry I didn't pull the data then, because we do have that data. It's okay. <laughs> um, so yes, there is survey data, and I'm sure it shows that there's, there's some need. It, it shows that there's, there's no connectivity or very limited connectivity in the rural areas. Right. Which yep. is what we generally are, no. Yep, it's, yeah, it's what we all know. And so once we determine there's need, then the next step that we're suggesting is conducting a feasibility study. Or, sorry, so this is the assessing need part. This is, this is my porch yes, or last week opening envelopes of surveys from people in Linden Township. So it, it's a manual process. Uh, but the feasibility study, we have interviewed a number of consulting firms. The one we're using primarily right now is called Pulse Broadband. There's another one called CTC that Ann Arbor Township is looking at. Doesn't matter who the firm is, but uh, these firms conduct a study to see how financially and practically viable the project is. In Linden Township, to run fiber to every house in the township, it's a $6.8 million project. Not a small number. But they also came to the conclusion that it's a viable project because everybody's paying for broadband already. I'm paying $150 a month to Verizon. So, you know, paying something else is not a problem for me. Um, so it's a viable project. There are a lot of questions that came out of the feasibility study that we're digging down into. I won't go into those now. Uh, funding is the hard part, right? If we had funding, this would be done already. So some townships have a lot of money and do this out of the general fund. Um, that's pretty uncommon. In Linden Township, we're talking about doing a bond backed by a millage. And we've done surveys because, you know, millages are controversial. Nobody likes taxes. But so far, we're seeing 75% of registered voters in support of a millage for broadband. So there's a big need, and people are willing to pay for it. In other townships like Dexter and Webster, where there is uh, significant existing coverage, they're looking at special assessment districts. And so that might be something to look at for Northfield Township. Well, if the legislation allows for it. Right. Currently, legislation does not actually allow for special assessment districts for broadband, but that's something we're working on. And so for Linden Township, if we did it for the whole township, it'd be 3.7 mils to do, do it with a millage. And um, I won't go through the details of this, but it basically it, it, it comes out, it, it's an advantage for the, uh, the township residents. It's better than anything they have available today um, and less expensive. And the total cost of ownership, this is uh, the, the study that we did on home values. It basically shows that uh, we, we, we took eight zip codes around in the area with broadband and eight without and there was a 20.9% difference in the past 20 years of how much those properties have appreciated. So there is a real difference with the connectivity. And so w what that looks like in practical terms, I'll skip to the last one. Uh, so the average Linden Township home, it would cost them $7,600 over 20 years in taxes. So that's a lot. 
but their home value would increase by $43,000. So it's a big equity gain, even if you ignore the, you know, all the benefits of actually having broadband connectivity. So assuming all that's done, you build it. The, uh, we formed the Michigan Broadband Cooperative to enable townships to work together. You know, Linden's doing something, Dexter's doing something, Webster's doing something. We don't want every township to have to reinvent the wheel and do their own independent thing. So this cooperative, again, is a nonprofit and provides a vehicle for the townships to work together with this kind of project. And the last, I'll leave you with this map. This is kind of where we are. Linden is the only one who's completed their feasibility study. Dexter and Webster are working on theirs right now. I actually just saw a, a draft of Webster's last night. Um, Sharon Township and Ann Arbor Township are pending funding for their feasibility studies. They're, they're still talking about it. So Ann Arbor Township in particular, there may, there may be an opportunity to work with them, go in together on a feasibility study, things like that. So that's where we're at. That's my email address. We have a website. Happy to take questions if there's time. Fifteen minutes only covers the actual presentation. Sure. According to Mr. Docker. Understood. Any questions? The only question I had is if you're putting it into a millage, that that doesn't um, that's in addition to having to pay for the broadband services in addition to that, Yes, right? and I s skipped okay. over those slides really fast. Uh, for the average Linden Township homeowner, it's like it comes out to thirty dollars a month, roughly, for the millage, and we're projecting the service would cost fifty dollars a month. So really, you're paying eighty dollars a month. But okay. also, as I mentioned, a lot of us are already paying a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars a month. So it doesn't look so bad. Well, I know in Northville Township there are areas where there is no broadband connection because they can't get um, dial-up, they can't get um, charter or cable, uh, so they don't have any opportunities at all. Yep, and those are the most important areas to address, for sure. Uh, Anyone? Are we, Madam Supervisor, yeah. are, are we taking questions from the audience? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Please come up. Yeah, come up to the mic so that everyone can hear you. With um, with the existing cable companies, if you don't like your service, if it goes down at, at prime time, you can uh, compete with other companies. So, what options would you have in this case if your service goes down or if, if your bandwidth isn't what it's supposed to be? So you raised two good points. Um, for most of the, the places in the area that actually have service, they only have one choice for cable. Uh, it, there are hardly any homes that have the choice between Charter or Comcast out here. So today, if, if you're unhappy with your Charter service, well, mostly too bad. Um, but the, the second good point that you raised is that Ideally, we would like to have what's called an open access network. So the important part is for the community to control that cable that runs to the house. And then after that, we don't really care who provides service over it. In fact, we would love it for three or four or five different companies to provide service over that cable because then you have that competitive marketplace that you allude to. Now in reality, if we're only doing one township, it's probably not going to be enough to attract four or five providers, so we'll probably start with one, maybe two. but the that vision is what we'd like to do in the long term. There was a question in the back. I guess we, we are taking questions. There was a question in the back if you wanted to. Hi, I'm in the, on the southeast corner, Township 1 South, Range 6 East. And uh, we've been talking to Comcast Business there because we run a business out of our home. So uh, they're considering expanding out here. Uh, after I talked to Charter, and uh, Charter refused to provide service, apparently the FCC allows for other companies to come in in that case. So um, it'll be a very, very expensive build out, but uh, that's what we're looking at in uh, our corner. Thank you. J just so everyone knows, um, the, the township has nothing in place to, um, to discourage competition. The markets are completely open. Anyone can come into any of the markets in Michigan, the only thing that uh, is required is that they uh, sign a franchise agreement with the township. 
The franchise agreement with the township is actually uh, set by the state. Um, there's really no negotiation that's involved. Uh, it's set by the state as to what the document is and uh, what the terms of the uh, of the franchise agreement are. In fact, actually, in truth and fact, that's what has created the problem that we're in is that the state came down and basically set these uh, determined uh, franchise agreements which eff effectively limit the ability of the townships and local governments to um, put pressure on the providers to expand the infrastructure. And, the fr and frankly, the reason for that is because uh, the lobby uh, in uh, Lansing uh, on the telecommunication side and cable side and these kind of issues are so large and, and so massive um, that uh, and that's how these things ended up happening. So um, the, if you call Comcast, uh, or excuse me, in, in, our, in our area, it's Charter, right? Charter, right? Yeah, if you call Charter, Charter will happily um, run the line to your house, okay? The problem is, is that they won't run the line to your house on their dime. They may say, okay, well, the closest line is a quarter of a mile away. It'll cost you $50,000 to get the line to your house, and you're welcome to go find a bunch of your neighbors if they want to hook up along the way. Um, they won't hook you up unless you have, uh, unless they have a better than two-year return on investment for the putting of their infrastructure in. Um, so what we have is a, is a gap in the marketplace. Um, there is nothing in the market that will provide a, a financial incentive for infrastructure to be run. So for those who say and look to the market to solve these kind of problems, the issue is in <coughs> fact the market. Um, and so that's where folks like Ben and, and other folks around the country and where I used to come from, uh, people were talking about it as well, is look at what are alternatives to run cable. Um, and obviously somebody has to pay for that cable um, and, uh, uh, and somebody has to service it, be the ISP and all that. So that's really what Ben and his group is talking about. Um, and so this is really a con, just so the board knows why we're talking about this. This is a conversation that's been going on at the county for quite some time. I've been involved in a number of presentations and conversations related to it. Um, and uh, a number of communities have essentially said, let's actually move forward and, and, and look at a feasibility study and to see what it would take. Um, I'm not suggesting you do that or not do that. I'm not even suggesting you do anything today. Um, but I wanted to ask Ben to come and give a presentation as to what was going on in the rest of the county and, and what the issues are. Um, I just want, I want to manage the expectation. Um, the, the solution is not pressure on Charter or Comcast or AT&T, because that gets you nowhere. Um, people have been trying that for years. I tried that in a former community, and it literally gets you nowhere. Um, uh, about the closest anyone has come, which was what we learned about what, last week, and I forget what township it was, uh, where they actually got a number out of charter as to how much it would cost to get service throughout the whole community. That's the closest anyone's coming to any kind of cooperation. So anyway, it's just a little background. Yeah, go ahead, Janet. Yeah, I, I also, <clears throat> also wanted to comment that the other reason to have, be having this conversation is that for seven years on the Planning Commission, we've had several people come up and step up at, to the podium and, and say that, you know, when are we going to get this in our township? And I think this is good information so that they can see and we understand exactly what the cost is and what the project is like. So there is an interest here, especially in the rural areas. So thank you for doing that. Jay, go ahead. I think another opportunity to do a survey is is because we are coming up with our master plan. This is a good opportunity to raise questions in the survey for the next master plan to see where we uh, where we can land with uh, having some type of uh, millage or some type of support within the community to have uh, broadband in the community. And, and that's a gr great idea. That's exactly what Linden did, is they included questions with their master plan survey. So I, I would be happy to share those. Um, the one thing that I would, I would say, and, and I, can, I can watch it um, uh, and, and kind of give you updates, is to kind of watch what Ann Arbor Township does, maybe have a conversation with Ann Arbor Township uh, 
this week or next week and, and see what they end up doing. If they end up moving forward on a feasibility, it may be prudent to look at what would a feasibility cost in Northfield and see if there's any economies of scale there, if it was something you wanted to do. And that's if. All right. Thank you for coming out this evening. I don't think we have any further questions unless anyone in the audience has anything. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. We'll um, obviously uh, talk about this in our further uh, meetings in the future and see if there's anything that we can start talking about further. All right. So that takes us on to our agenda items. Thank you for the Dreff family for coming out tonight. Um, our agenda items, the People's Express. Uh, we had our presentation last week. Um, it's on the agenda to talk about some more. Does anyone have any thoughts? I have some things that I'd like to say. Anyone want to chime in? Now, is this on our agenda to vote on, or is it uh, just a discussion item? I, I'm waiting. You know, I guess I'm looking for some, some um, oh, direction from you guys of, you know, if you want to vote on it. I, I mean, would, I, I, well, we could, but I'd rather see it on a regular meeting to vote on. Yeah, and so have would I. What are, you, what are you voting on? No, she asked if we were voting on the People's Express contract, and I said, well, I was looking for some direction from you guys of what you wanted to do because it's, you know, a workshop. We, you know, is try that, not to is vote. Is that where we're at right now? We are. Yes. Uh, yeah, okay. correct. You know, and you know, my thoughts are, you know, I'm still uncomfortable with the funding for transportation as I have in the past. You know, I love what they do, but, you know, to use our township dollars, you know, for, you know, this transportation, I just think it should be more done on a county level. Um, so those are just my thoughts. I'm still, uh, still uncomfortable with it. Wayne, go ahead, please. Uh, I had uh, experience with uh, the express thing. Uh, I had a friend of mine who worked for me who went to prison, and when he came out, he didn't have a driver's license or anything. So I, I happened to live next door to, to the place, so I tried to get him uh, in order to get to work and back and all. He had to call three days ahead of time. Uh, it was eight bucks. Uh, uh, if you missed the thing, I mean, I don't think it was good for the money they charge. Uh, you know, uh, they, uh, I, I would not support this whatsoever. Uh, I, I, I had the personal experience with it. So, I mean, I don't understand if, if I want to go to a doctor appointment or I want to go to a grocery store, I got to call three days ahead of time to set this thing up. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's, it's not what you think it is. Give it a try, you'll find out. Thank you. I do want to say, though, that there are people that do not have transportation available to them, and they do have to work around going to doctor appointments, whether they have <clears throat> uh, a family member that takes them, they have to work around their schedule, whether they have a taxi a cab come and get them, they have to pay out. Uh, considerably for that um, that option and then some of these people are on fixed incomes that can't afford $50 round trips or $60 round trips I think that they would you know it's more up to the people that um, that are using the service that you have to ask was it a value to you and if it's a value to them and this is it's we're giving it back to the community plus federal dollars are being added to this which are which are increasing the number of people that are have availability for a ride so county I understand that you we want to it's the county a level that needs to take care of us but they aren't have you used it have you called them? Have you ever used it? I don't have to use them because I, no, I well, have I, my own I, car. I mean, give it a try. See what you think. I know, maybe we're better off to call a taxi cab and give them 20 bucks to take the person somewhere. Well, you know, I mean, there's other, there's other ways to do this. I don't think it's a value. That's my opinion. Thank you. It's a value to the people that use it. I mean, 20 bucks two ways is $40. These people are only paying 5 or $7. I don't know why the township wouldn't want to help our seniors or people that are disabled that can't get around. And, you know, we're making a donation, so is the, uh, the um, uh, hello, 
the government, yeah. So um, it's coming out of our general fund. It is, but it's right. People it, are well, getting a return for the well, tax dollars. I think we can dollars. do it better. But well, how, like, how many out them, of all the taxes? Last year we gave them ten thousand dollars. Give, give it to somebody else this year. See how that works. Go ahead, Kathy. Well, that, that was just my concern, that there's an increase being asked for. I think the county now kicks in 20000 We kicked in another ten. they They're asking for another five. I heard the number, 1,500 rides. How many people is that? Is that the same 100 people? There are 8,500 people in this township. How special is this interest? That's all I'm asking. How special is interest? Are there any documents or anything kept of how many different people we might be better off taking that fifteen thousand dollars and and hiring a car service uh, through the township I'm, I'm i don't think you're going to get transportation for fifteen thousand dollars in our and i and i think the contract's only for ten, 10. yeah i don't she see didn't it for an increase she didn't ask for f in the contract yeah, yeah. if you read the contract it's only mm -hmm. for ten so she it is no she said she'd take more yeah, uh, but she only more, asked for ten. She only put ten oh, on the okay. contract. Well, 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 she putting the contract is sort of not accurate. We we get, we put this contract in the package because it's the same contract from last year. Okay. Because we're not renegotiating the contract. Oh. We, we spent a bunch of time negotiating the contract last year, going through the legal issues. So it was ten thousand dollars last year. I put the contract in yeah. ten thousand dollars. That has no bearing on what the Lord's asking. And I felt. I assumed she was asking for ten thousand dollars. Well, she said she'll take and more. If yeah. she, oh, I see. She'd take more, but since that hasn't been presented, well, well, double, there, du double or triple her, and give it to her then. If she takes more, give her all she needs. <coughs> Why well, stop it? Well, you know what I would do is, and this is what I'm going to say. I'm those in our community that use the service. If we're going to put it on the agenda for the next board meeting, I would welcome them to be, participate in the audience and to at least let each of the board members have some feedback as to why they need the service. That's a good idea. I'll agree to that. So we'll put it on next meeting? Sure. Okay. Sounds good. All right. That takes us on to number two of our agenda items, which is the Fire Department Capital Improvement Plan that we've talked about with Mr. Wagner before. Um. Um, the only question that really came up coming into that I had to do a little research on was kind of the method of payment or payment plan and it's really up to us and so uh, again it takes about a year to build a fire truck once we sign the agreement and the recommendation that I got which I don't always take a recommendation from a salesman but he was actually talking for us is that if you do something like 50% down and then you hold that next 50% and you have something to hold over their head to make sure the truck gets finished how you want it, when you want it. So that's kind of what um, the direction we were uh, thinking. And it, it, it's, it costs anywhere between if you no cost, if you pay it all up front versus um, maybe seven to $9,000 in finance fees um, if you weren't to pay anything until it'd be nine thousand, so if we paid half, it would probably be three, four thousand dollars, forty-five hundred dollars uh, that it would cost in finance fees for the. So let I me mean, just uh, step in real quick. If if the board decides, uh, based on Mr. Wagner's recommendation, and I recommend that the board uh, authorize the expenditure as well. Um, I would recommend uh, an authorization of $125,000 out of uh, this uh, $125,000 allocation this year um, and an additional $125,000 um, when uh, uh, at the balance of the um, uh, fire truck delivery for a total of $250,000 of which one twenty-five dollars will be transferred uh, uh, you know, within the next month or so. So that's out of the general fund, and then Correct. the remaining portion would come out of the fire department fund balance. And the money's coming out of the general fund? Correct. I would like to see this uh, on, a, on a ballot for a bond. I, I, I can't understand why, you know, we, we give the fire department $750,000 thereabouts uh, to run the fire department, 
they never stay within their budget. We give them at least $50,000 a year out of the fund, out of the general fund. Now we're talking about giving them $250,000 out of the general fund. I mean, how do you put any restraints on these people? You, you let them go in front of the people, the voters that pay the bill, and let them go for millage if the people want to give them the millage. Spend all you want, but uh, I'm against taking it out of the general fund. Anyone else? Any comments, thoughts? Was there any qu more questions on the uh, the actual capital improvement plan that I had presented? I can answer anything. Where where is the capital improvement plan? That we went over that. See, I don't think anything is anything in here. Should have been it's in, in your, your packet. It's in your packet. And, and actually, it was, we went over it at the two board meetings ago. So this is the unfortunate thing with the fire department. It would be different if all we're paying for is paper clips and Xerox paper, but we are. We have huge equipment that we have to maintain, that we have to purchase, that have to be used to support um, anybody, any fire, any accident that happens in our community. Um, all this equipment needs to be maintained, and that is why there's a high dollar amount. It isn't because we have gold paper clips or we have 30-pound uh, 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 Xerox paper that we're purchasing all the time. It has to do with the type of equipment that we have to have for a fire department. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, where, where is the, I, I don't see any, Where's this money coming from for? The general fund. All of it's coming from the general fund. $250,000 would be a general fund allocation. Yeah, well, well I'm not. Not all of it. There would be monies that would come out of the fire department fund and from the sale of existing trucks. Yes. Right. But, but what's wrong with millage? Thank you. So I can appreciate the fact, Chief Wagner, that you are actually downsizing in equipment and purchasing equipment that's better quality and less maintenance. And um, I would like to know, what is the MABS tanker task force? So the, the MABIS is, um, it's an organization that, it's, it's a mutual aid automatic box alarm system is what it's called. So it's a, a preset unit of trucks that responds to large fires or large disasters. It could be a local large uh, MABIS tank, tanker task force which would be, let's say, a, a barn fire in a rural area where our real large need is for water because there is no rural you know, water supply. So we have to bring water to the fire, so to speak. So there's a preset set of tankers. We are actually, we're not part of it in the Livingston County because we don't have any tankers that qualify um, because we don't carry enough water. Um, but in the northern part of Washtenaw County, we have we are part of that tanker task force, um, and then then there's even a larger um, national disaster type of Mabus that we're also part of, where if um, Hurricane Katrina or something like that, where they needed a tanker task force, in actually that's not a good example, maybe something up by Lansing, some large disaster by Lansing. Um, we would participate with other tankers from Washtenaw County to take a tanker up to Lansing. And these are all preset in place so that you don't scramble trying to bring all these things together. It's one phone call and we have two hours to get to Lansing or we have you know, eight hours to get to Indianapolis or something like that. So this is saying that because we don't hold enough water, our tankers don't carry enough water that we can't participate in that tanker task right. force? Okay, so our current tankers only carry 1,800 gallons of water and the accepted amount is 2,500. Right. Okay. And, and again, um, we're taking and, and combining two trucks. Right. As you mentioned, we're downsizing our fleet, but we're combining apparatus. And so we started with when I was here, when I started, 12 or 13 pieces of apparatus, and we're going down to about eight pieces of apparatus. Is, is there any funding or any um, dollar advantage of being part of Mavis? Um, if we go, we qualify for reimbursement. 
through the federal government okay. if it becomes a national disaster. And also, I think I mentioned at that last meeting, we still are, again, I'm not real confident we're going to get it. We are still in the running for federal funding for this tanker that we're requesting also. Well, I want to thank you, Bill, for being proactive and, you know, looking at our equipment and the cost to maintain and stuff like that. So I'm willing to put forward a motion to approve the Northfield um, Township Fire Department apparatus replacement plan as presented on 7 16 125000 out of allocation for this year and another 125000 at the completion of the truck, which would probably be approximately one, one year over. Uh, it'll probably be close to 14 months. It'll take us two months to prepare and get ready to put the truck right. out to bid. And that will all come back before the board also. All right. Supported. Thanks, you. Um, Ingstrom motioned and Braun supported. Those in favor? Roll call vote. Sure. Check. Yes. Braun? Yes. Docket? No, because I don't like the way it's financed is why I'm doing it. Ingstrom, yes. Otto? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we don't need to do it tonight uh, so that, uh, um, well, I don't think we need to do it tonight uh, for purposes of time, but um, as I've talked about in the past with the Van Curler purchase and the fire truck purchase, we're going to need to look at the fund balance policy. Okay. All right, that takes us on to agenda item number three, the Main Street Sidewalk Project. So the Main Street Sidewalk Project is a project that we've been working on for uh, about a year and a half, two years now. Um, it is uh, actually ready for construction. Um, uh, there is no money being paid for out of the general fund. There is no dollars coming out of the township's coffers. Uh, but I, do would I would like a vote of approval tonight uh, because I do want to update you on, uh, on the cost of the project. Um, we had had about $68,000 in unspent community development block grant funds through the county. Um, the total project cost uh, came in higher than anyone have expected at 159,893, which means that our allocation at the community development block grant uh, county allocation for roughly um, nine years uh, will be uh, taken up with this project. Um, I still recommend moving forward. I think it's a very good project. Uh, essentially, the project is so that the children don't have to walk in the street uh, when they're headed to the Whitmore Lake Middle School. I realize that the Whitmore Lake Middle School is um, not um, uh, functioning uh, through the Whitmore Lake School District, but there is still school activities going on there. Um, and I, I still believe that it's a valuable project. Um, and there are no dollars coming out of the general fund. Um, so with that, I uh, suggest and recommend uh, moving forward in approval. And uh, if we do so tonight, uh, tomorrow, we'll give the go ahead and um, construction will begin. Go ahead, Wayne. I have no idea why we are doing this when we have no Northfield Township children going to school there. Uh, why are we paying out? I understand that the money is a grant, $160,000. We're using up whatever, some kind of a grant that we would be getting over the next nine years. But to me, to spend $160,000 on a closed school, on a school that, that the Northfield Dump did doesn't have anything to do with, uh, it just doesn't make sense to me. I, I think we could do better with our money. Uh, so I would I would be asking for a roll call vote. I'm not going to support this. I do want to add that the school is being used for people who are in Northville Township. There is the... None of them are walking. Not one of them is walking. You don't know that. You don't know that. I know that. I watch. <laughs> okay. So there is the early childhood center that is there. Um, and those are for people who are uh, low income. Um, the, even the, the children, and you don't know if any of the children are going to the charter school that is there, that are local. You don't know. And you know, just all the other activities they hold there, you know, oh after gosh. school sports. The, after you know. school sports, the, um, 
the gym is used constantly. Oh, it's booked salad. So. The school should be paying for it. I would think just Not even the for the safety of the community. We the the school should be paying. The school should be paying, not the township. Well, it's not on the school property. It's on. It's on uh, community property. It's sidewalks. It's easements. I, 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 I think I it's a good project. I think it's a good project. Yeah. Yeah. schools yeah. there or not, right. it's an expansion of our sidewalk infrastructure. I think it's a good. And project. we're improving the the quality of our our community. <laughs> I mean. I mean, yeah. the next sidewalk that really should be looked at is on East Shore. Yeah. And this should be 20 foot, not 10, <laughs> or 8, or whatever you're putting in there. If we put 10 foot everywhere else, why are you putting a 8 foot or 6 foot, wherever you're putting there? It doesn't make sense to me. Howard, that grant for the nine years that we're using it, is it, can it be used for anything else, or is it specifically for sidewalks? or Oh, no, over? It's, it can be used for a lot of things but it has to be used in a low moderate income census tract. Oh, yeah, and uh, actually one of our mm -hmm. census tracts mm -hmm. yeah. has actually switched over recently and become a low moderate income census yeah. tract. Um, and it's the, actually it's the area where this project is located. But at the time that we started this project, it was not a low mod income census tract. And we had to do a survey and it took us probably about seven months mm -hmm. to get the survey to, to comply. Um, and go knocking on doors, door to door th at, the, um, at the apartment complex and throughout the area. Um, you know, is, is, c could we have created a different project now that there's a low mod income census track uh, expansion in the township? May there have been more impact? I, I don't disagree, yes. But when we started the project two years ago, uh, to do this, and it was a good project then, I think it's still a good project now. Is there a better project today? Probably. But, you know, if we stop now and go back to the drawing board, nothing, um, huh? Uh, nothing will ever get done. Well, exactly. I mean, uh, you know, you know I, I see Mr. Dockett's point, uh, and I, I, there's part of me that even agrees with it. But here we have an opportunity to make a community improvement today with dollars that we have and dollars that we can borrow for from the future as opposed to going back to the drawing board and potentially being another year or two f from some kind of construction. Um, but to answer your question directly, yes, there are other uses for the funds uh, and they're, they're, they're vast because if you're in a low mod census tract, there are other uses. So. I don't know if that. Well, that doesn't mean a sidewalk down East Shore. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, I, let me just say this. I, I am on record uh, in public. I support a sidewalk on East Shore. Uh, my wife uh, uh, has walked East Shore many times with Elliot. Um, it's dangerous to walk no, East Shore. I'm not being critical. I'm just saying that that's a whole difficult, that would be a very difficult project. Oh, there's absolutely. There's no shoulders. There's very oh, little there's easement. no question. I mean, yeah, what are you going to buy everybody's house? Uh, it'd be in the millions, if mm -hmm. I had to guess. Yeah. For yeah. a four I've foot, not a ten foot. Um, but I think, but, but yeah. I, uh, you know, speaking of sidewalks, I think the board should say that, you know, that is a priority project and, and start at least some kind of feasibility study on a path or sidewalk along East Shore, around the lake. I think we should do it. I don't know what the end game is gonna be, but I think we should put one foot in front of the other with it. Take the small step. I agree. Um, I'll make a motion to approve. I'm Roll sorry. Ball. Yeah, let me get the motion out first. Motion to approve the Main Street sidewalk present, uh, project as presented and authorize the project to move forward to be paid for by the current CDBG funds and future allocations. I will support. Ingstrom motioned and Chick supported. Mr. Dockett has requested a roll call. I will start to my right. Otto. Yes. Ingstrom, yes. Dockett. I think we can do better. No. Ron. Yes. Chick. Yes. Thank you. Uh, it takes us on to number four, the repaving of the parking lot at 75 Barker Road. Any questions? Uh, we'll, we'll try that. 
Howard, do you want to film in on the DDA uh, yeah, uh, on their yeah, project the DDA, list, maybe? The DDA has committed to uh, repay or not repaving, excuse me, restriping and um, and uh, seal coating uh, the parking lot at 75 Barker. There may be some dollars in there to cut out a few sections that really need to be actually paved, repaved rather, rather than seal coated. Um, uh, Ms. Griff, uh, Ms. Griffin has uh, received a quote for 1600 bucks. Um, she's asking that the Board of Trustees allocate $800 out of the general fund to pay for it. Um, I think there's plenty of money in the budget. Um, I would recommend that you authorize uh, dollars uh, to redo the parking lot at 75 Barker. I would also recommend, um, and if you would like, you could certainly add it, um, I'd recommend that if you do um, uh, do the parking lot for uh, 800 bucks at 75 Barker, um, they, uh, you consider authorizing some dollars for me in the future to allocate for some nice signage uh, showing that it is a community parking lot. Howard, is there any way in the, in the future that we could <clears throat> even allocate that property as uh, community property other than just putting signs up? In what way? I mean, is there... <clears throat> what I'm saying is, um, is do we have to, it doesn't have to be zoned for that, or that's what I guess I'm asking. No. Okay. No, I don't believe, I mean, I don't believe that there would be any restriction on having a community parking lot there. Okay. Yeah. Why don't we ask little Porky to cough up for $800 instead of taking it out of our money? Why don't what? Why don't we ask little Porky's? To pay eight hundred dollars, rather, I'm, rather I'm, than, I'm, rather I'm, than, I'm, let me finish, please, Howard. Why don't we ask little Porkies to pay? You're going to give them uh, some parking there. Uh, I, I would say that they should pay their fair share and uh, leave, leave our eight hundred dollars in our general fund. Thank you. You can ask him that question as soon as we get to it on the agenda, Mr. Doctor. Well, it will be, it'll be too far along by then. So no, you, you want to vote on this now? So it's kind of backwards. Okay. Change the agenda, Mr. Doctor. Nope. We already approved it. Thank you, Mr. All right. What kind of, what kind of a, a, a commitment do we have to Tina Lupi there? Uh, Wayne, we are on one, we're on just the, the DDA with their generous offering well, to I, contribute. I, I, don't, I don't see the DDA one. That's Where's for the that? paving. The, ne the lease is on the discussion items coming soon. Well, what, what happened? Well, you mean this, the lease, is, these two don't come before that? We're talking about the repaving of the parking lot on 75 Barker Road right now. Oh, and that's the sheet right here. Right there's the lease, is that correct? Am I out of, am I out of what? Here? order, parking lot for 75 Barker. I, that's the way I got the packet. So. No, Mr. Dockett, your packet was correct. I don't know why it's out of order today, no. but everybody no. else is in order. No. Howard sabotaged. So what? What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. This is. Yeah. This so is just one to, of those to bring meetings. you up to speed, then, Mr. Dockett, we are currently talking about the parking lot at 75 Barker Road. The DDA would like to uh, have it. Um, Oh, um, resurfaced, thank you, and striped. It's our, in, uh, let, let me just say it's this, guys. Property. It's our piece of property. Yeah. The parking lot needs to be Oops. striped and seal coated. It's just going to continue to deteriorate. I don't care if Little Porky's is using it. Uh, that's a discussion later on the agenda. I don't care if uh, Tina Lupi is using it. That's later on the agenda. We if own it. We need to maintain it. I don't care who uses it or what it's for. <laughs> we need to keep up our infrastructure. And the DDA is gracious enough to give well, us. Well, maybe, we, maybe we should paint the building if we're going to do that. There's no paint on the building. So it, it'll even look worse with a new parking lot. No paint. All right. I'm willing to make a motion to approve. I'm going to say 800 to contribute towards the resurfacing and striping of the parking lot and an additional $800 out of the general fund. Both of those figures are out of the general fund to possibly upgrade some nice uh, signage that people do know that that is public parking. So that's 1600 S all You I bet, total. All I see is 800 on there. Nope, I went up to, I added another 800 oh, to buy some just, signs. What, 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 oh yeah, we just made the money over okay, here. Yeah, yeah, very good, yeah, 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 maybe double it. 
I have a motion on the table. Would anyone like to second it? Thank you. Angstrom motion and check supported. Those in favor? No, I would like to have a roll call vote. Sure. Check. Braun? Yes. Bra uh, Docket? No. Angstrom, yes. Otto? Yes. Thank you. I'm looking forward to doing that, and thank you for the DDA for participating. And I will check with the DDA about trying to get them to split the cost of the signage as well. Thank you. I only threw the 800 on there. Yo, the, I'm sure you won't it. spend all that, but I didn't want you to have to come back later for a, a hundred dollar difference or anything. Thanks, Madam Thank you. Make it a hundred dollar difference. Okay. Make it eight. Then that takes us to number five, which was the uh, on the agenda item, which we added, and it's just to talk about the possibility of changing our thoughts on the roundabouts. We had. Um, approved the roundabouts for uh, soft uh, regular landscaping and said that the township would take care of them and as I drive around the town um, not our township but uh, Green Oak um, you know Ann Arbor all these roundabouts that are everywhere and the ones with the beautiful landscaping when they first come look great but then over the years it just deteriorates and no one maintains them like they should and I was admiring the one over on uh, Getty's Road that it's actually like brick paved, uh, stamped concrete, colored concrete, and it looked very nice and clean versus all the weeds and you know just all uh, the bushes dying or getting too big, and then it's just a nonstop expense. And that's right, it's a nonstop expense. Correct. Thank you very much, Janet. So. Um, would we absorb the cost of the hardscaping? I mean, the, the, wouldn't the county would pay for the... I don't know. It, it's just something I okay. thought of and thought, you know, maybe we should talk right. about. What, I mean, Howard like might be able yeah. to fill us in on there. I mean, you know, can they, they allocate the dollars that they were going to put for the landscaping into the hardscape? Okay. The Equal only, money? The only, what I'd like to see is a comparison between what it would cost to maintain it over a certain period of time and what the cost yeah, of the hardscaping Yeah, because you still, have to, be. you still yeah. have to maintain it right. at you some do. point. Lyon Township has a hardscape in theirs. Yeah, someone still has to spray for weeds. Or, yeah, somebody you know, but still has to spray for weeds, but we're talking it, minimal does, compared it does to, look good. Yeah. It does look nice. They have uh, brick pavers in theirs, and that looks re really nice. Yeah. I mean, did. Okay, M -dot wants, M -dot but do you have a figure in mind? I, I mean, I, it's what do you mean to maintain well, that? I mean, to I, maintain I, the I hardscape? Don't have, I don't have a piece of paper. If you want to vote on something? I don't have a piece of paper. What are you? Excuse I, me. I, I have no idea. Do I have no idea what you're talking about. How much let money? Let me let Howard finish, okay? What's that? Let Howard finish what he was saying, and maybe you'd understand more, okay? What are you saying that MDOT needs an answer? What? MDOT needs an answer because before we were going to do uh, landscaping um, on the hardscape side, it wouldn't be any cost to the township. There would be, it would just be the hardscape and they'd build it into the project. It would, just, it, would, it would be what they build. And in terms of maintenance, I mean, yes, obviously there's maintenance for weeds, but it's significantly mm -hmm. less, obviously, than the maintenance yeah. of landscaping. Um, I, I, I unfortunately I hate to do this, but we kind of need to decide: do we want hardscape or do we want softscape? Okay. If we're leaning towards hardscape, that's fine. Um, if we got some figures, Robert? but if there is no figures for hardscape, are we, they just going to put it's the same in, dollar in amount? Docket? No, are they just going to put? Um, I, I guess what I needed to know is: are they just going to put a cement in? Is that it? Yeah. And that would be the hardscape, or would there be any design to go with it? I believe there's design to go with it. Oh, that's my um, question too. I mean, can we uh, how, how throw we in a those? design, or can it, you know, have you like guys? a Whitmore Lake sign or yeah, pavers yeah. or like stamp concrete? And and that's what I want to say too is I'm all for this also. We're all for hardscape. Hard hard all right. Yeah. How about we do this? How about you guys give me the authority to make this call, and I'll lean towards hardscape, mm -hmm. um, and I'll make sure that we get some nice looking hardscape. And if for some reason it ends up just being like a pure slab of concrete, then we'll go, you know, we'll, we'll go with the landscaping. But let me, I mean, I think this is one where you just no, authorize me to I make the call. I don't agree with that because who is going to pay for the landscaping, us or them? It was, we are. It was they us. It was for, us. They would pay so for if it they're initially. only going to put a slab in, then then we need some wiggle room. I mean, if yeah. you're going to pay for landscaping e anyway, mm -hmm. why not pay for some? I don't think you should immediately scrap it then and go with landscaping just okay. because it's concrete. Well, then we let's would just, just vote we on. Would, we, we would we have just, to know what 
what, what it looks like. like. Yeah. yeah. Then let's just you know vote on like. hardscape at this point, um, which is fine. And I'll do my like best to make. Just the motion to approve changing it to hardscape would be fine. All right, I'm willing to put that motion forward. Make a motion to approve hardscape versus landscaping on the roundabout that we've previously approved for MDOT. Angstrom motion and Braun supported. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Motion that, passes. That would only be at North Territorial. Green Oak right. Township already committed to landscaping at eight miles. Okay. So we're only talking North Territorial roundabouts. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let me see. Takes us on to discussion items. National staff leasing at 75 Barker Road. Um, obviously we have Howard's memo. I, I, I have the same um, thought thoughts on not a long-term lease or anything like that. Um, knowing that we're soon the Van Curler property, maybe that is something that could be incorporated with it as a, you know, a big plan or something, who knows, but um, do you need anything on this or you're just doing a discussion item at this point? Um, I, I would prefer a vote and I'll tell you why because We've, we've had a request for uh, a one or a two year lease. This is my opinion that we not do that. So I'm in agreement with a kind of month to month situation. Potentially we could always agree to a 60 or 90 day notification that we would provide them notification if we decided that we were gonna do anything. So that way we give them a little bit of uh, protection. Um, I'm in agreement, but since they've requested uh, a one to two year lease, um, this would be the opportunity for the board to say either yes we'll move forward with a one or two year lease and if so Brad and I will start drafting it and if the answer is no we want to stick to a month to month probably be best to do that as a vote of the board I think I'm happy with month to month I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel on another lease with you know early term yeah that we can terminate it why not just leave it as it is it's fine Are anyone else's thoughts or feelings I would like to at least give her the the option of having the longer notification of 90 days. <coughs> it, it is hard, <coughs> you know, if business. we do anything and we have to give her a notification, uh, nine, 60 days is too short a period of time to look for another lease or even move out or even plan to move out of a building. Right. 90 days is probably stretching it at max, so. If we're going to do this, at least give her um, 90 days. What? And the one-year lease, give her 90? Or are you still talking month, month to, to month? month but uh, we month to need, month okay. that we give her a 90-day notification if we're going to do a month to month lease. Give her the, the mat, uh, give her as long as we can. I would even, I would even consider giving her um, 120, but 90 days is fine. I have no problem with that. Nothing moves fast anyways. Yep. I have no issues with giving them three, uh, you know, three months notice. Okay. Why don't we just uh, make that vote? We'll you want know, a motion right now? Yeah. Then? Yeah, before there's discussion. I'll make a motion to um, keep the current lease at 75 Barker Road with national staffing lease uh, month to month and also add in that we do have to give 90 day notice to the tenant if we plan on terminating our agreement or month month lease i support angstrom motion and chick supported those in favor aye aye, aye. aye. those opposed motion passes yes wayne uh, are we are we going to mention anything about the offices or is she not running the offices now or she's not running the offices okay so if we give, if we go into this, and, and she wants to bring in some staffing in them offices, can we think about it or change it or? or I notice in here it says that she has the option to have the two offices. <coughs> the landlord also leases to the tenant two office space located in the fire hall, consisting of a 50 square foot each. 
including the right of ingress and egress. That's a good point. You should, if you don't want that to be the case, maybe we should cross that off. Or, you should or, probably vote to remove that. So what? Make a vote to remove it from the agreement. Lisa, <laughs> can I amend that mo or? Uh, Okay, I want to amend the motion to include uh, to remove the um, the additional bays the fifty. Yeah, remove from the lease. The landlord also leases to the tenant the two office spaces located in the fire hall, consisting of approximately five hundred square feet each, including the right of ingress and egress to the offices. I'd like to add that. I can send that down to you if I read that too fast for you. Removing that from the lease. Yeah, because if she leases to somebody for six months or something. Right. Oh, yeah, we can. Okay. And then I would, so let's uh, vote on this again, you guys, since we do have the amendment. Okay. Yeah. Um, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? You were in? Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Thanks. Okay. I think so, if I can, if I understand it. Is this mine? I think so. Here's your hand. Right here. Oh, I guess it is. I don't know. Uh, All right. Oh, that's that broadband. Yeah. Thing. I don't care anything about that. Okay. That takes us to our second discussion item, which is the parking at 75 Barker slash Driftwood Marina. I will try to be brief, Madam Supervisor. Great, uh, thanks. Somer is in the audience. Somer, uh, Somer, if you want to come up. <coughs> Somer owns Little Porky's. Um, Somer has purchased the Driftwood Marina. Um, Somer is looking at plans right now to tear down the Driftwood Marina and rebuild uh, a new marina and bar, grill, restaurant in its location. I have been working and uh, and uh, debating and uh, convincing uh, Somer uh, to do a bar restaurant in that area for oh, about a year and a half now. So I'm very happy about this. Um, in order to make it work, Somer believes, and I agree, that he needs additional parking, uh, particularly if he's going to do a restaurant type of environment. Um, I am su fully supportive of... Uh, using the parking lot at 75 Barker so that Somer can um, uh, use that as part of his uh, parking uh, um, uh, calculations and numbers and direct signage, direct people to 75 Barker for parking for uh, the restaurant bar. Um, I, uh, I don't know how that would look. I don't know what that agreement would look like. I think that obviously there needs to be a formal agreement and I'll let Somer specifically speak to what he wants um, and I don't have that agreement here today or we haven't you know talked about that but I'm in full support of it I think this is good planning this is good economic development it was what you know the whole idea of a parking lot at 75 Barker was always intended to be um, and I want to do whatever we can to support a local business to uh, to improve um, and what he's planning is uh, a, a, a huge improvement. Thanks, Howard. Welcome. Um, <clears throat> as of right now, uh, speaking with the architect, there's only room for seven parking spots at the current location. Yeah. Uh, that is nowhere near enough to run any sort of bar or restaurant. So that is why I need some designated parking over at 75 Barker. You know, it is public parking, so I also would need. Uh, designated parking because I don't know what plans are at that 75 Barker that could take up more public parking away. So you're looking at specific signage that has your company, you know, Correct. your restaurant Something, on yeah, it that marina, says belongs to. Yes. <laughs> okay. Isn't that the same as buying the parking? spots or I'm, I'm just because it, it's like in Brighton for example there's all this community parking 
that's used by the restaurants downtown. Mm -hmm. Why does it have to be designated? That means no one else could park there, correct? It would be parking for Driftwood well, Barn Grill only. And when <laughs> no one was using those spots, they would just have to stay empty or you could have the person towed away, correct? No one else could park there. I'm not sure about, you know, but that's what I'm wondering. It's like, I mean, I if don't there's enough community parking, how do the bars and restaurants in Brighton do it. Like, especially on Main Street, there's no parking. They have Not to use all. those community lots. And then, and then my, and that's just one question I have. And then my other question is, of course, would you have an umbrella policy or something that I would cover yeah. liability? That's something I would discuss with my attorney uh, about that. Details, um, right, but those are just my two questions. Okay. Yeah, because I would think that once we start designating areas, <clears throat> I well, would think that, and I'm going to speak as an attorney, that I would think that there has to be some uh, in coverage of insurance certificate or something. But um, I also, because I frequent uh, Brighton a lot because I work up there, um, there are some that are designated right for those restaurants only because they're near to the restaurants, but the ones where it's you know, city property is not. <clears throat> uh, I think this is a good opportunity to, I would be all for this myself. I think it's a good opportunity for us to, uh, I, I hate to say it, but hire my engineers and how much more parking can we get there? We've got a pretty good sized lot up there. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, if we're going to get into this, I think we should find out what we got there and I think we should get every lot we can get if we're going to do something with him uh, uh, and it's going to have to be can't be just temporary we're going to have to make some sort of commitment so so uh, I, I like the idea but uh, I, I think it's necessary for us to know what we got there so because isn't there space? and I think doing the paving of the the lot is probably appropriate so you can determine how many lots could be fitting in there Oh, you know, is there space to expand that parking lot where the old police department, you know, where it's all grassy right now? So there, there is an opportunity to grab more, right? It, there is an opportunity for an expansion potentially. Um, and there's also, uh, when, we, uh, when we do the repaving, uh, or excuse me, uh, Stripe, seal coating, yeah. and uh, when we do the restriping, I'll have the engineering firm look at it uh, and make sure that we're maximizing the number of spaces that we can get in. Howard, I can't hear you. I said when we restripe it, I will have the engineering company look at it and make sure that we're maximizing the number of uh, spaces that we get in the that, lot. That we have now. Or, yes. Yeah. But, yeah. But I still think we should certainly look into how many, mm -hmm. we, you know, regardless if they use it or not, we, we need as much parking downtown as we can get. Yeah. Actually, in, in truth and fact, the, the best people to do that are the ones that, that do seal coating and striping because they... They look at parking lots every single day. They're actually better than it than um, well, sometimes we, engineers. We, we, but I'll have both of them look at it and, and make probably, sure that we maximize. We probably need lighting and a few other things there. Don't let me. Um, but anyway, um, all of the details of this would have to be worked out. There would have to be an agreement with the township. Um, you would have to vote on a contractual agreement. We would have to negotiate a contractual agreement. I think what Somer, um, and I think Somer should speak directly to what he's looking for. But I think what tonight is about is, are you in favor in general of that concept? Are you supportive of it? Do you want us to begin the negotiations, the specifics of the details? Because you'll have to agree to that contract. Uh, but we don't want to move forward if you guys are not uh, uh, thinking along those lines. I would be thinking along them lines, but I don't know how many parking places you're talking about. We need to get a picture of, uh, of what's going on. I mean, how many, how many does he need? How many does he think he needs, and are they available? Can we go? I don't have an exact figure on how many I need. I guess that it all depends. I do know that seven spots that are right now, that won't even cover employees. Uh, but we have other commitments in that parking lot, too. Yeah. You know, for rentals and stuff like that. And we have we have it with the, uh, the chicken people and we... <laughs> You know, other things that happen. Yeah, I, just, I just want to be really clear. I, I, Madam Chick, I know I'm, I'm monopolizing. I apologize. One second. I just want to be really clear. 
a new restaurant and bar and a new building in downtown is a really, really big redevelopment, revitalization project. We really do. I just want to encourage and implore you to see the opportunity in terms of the sort of magnitude of, uh, of, of various options when we look at various commitments like uh, the barbecue for the 4th of July parade, I, chicken barbecue. I, I can speak to that. Please. Okay. So to speak to the chicken barbecue for the 4th of July, the Kiwanis has stepped away from uh, uh, hosting that anymore because of the uh, aging population that's in Kiwanis because we can't find the volunteers to do it. They have stepped away from it this year and they don't plan to take it on anymore. There are other people that are nonprofit organizations that are in the community that are thinking of taking it on. They may not put it in that specific spot. So that should be not even considered. But we have other commitments. Yeah, but I mean, this is a year round function versus one day 4th of July chicken. I think we could relocate them someplace. Um, you know, I'm totally for it and think it's a great idea. We do need something in our downtown. Um, you know, my only concern is that we don't want to give them all that parking for too long. You know, like we want to, uh, uh, I think, reserve spots that are for, you know, non driftwood customers, you know, that anyone else coming into downtown has a place to park. And then also with the buying of the Van Curler property, um, I can envision possibly, you know, parking somewhere behind, you know, this, you know, the southern section of that um, parcel. And maybe at that time, you know, um, Driftwood, Porkies, and Somer, you know, maybe would uh, like to contribute to the cost of building the parking lot or helping out with something like that, you know, a, a partnership because we want you and we'd like to have you, but we still have to make sure that we have enough parking for everyone, but I'm totally for it. Okay, like my hand has gone numb. It's been like 15 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, you know, I, have, I knew you were waiting. So I'm so sorry. I have sorry. nothing earth-shattering to say. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this conversation. I think we should be doing this. But I do want us to be mindful that if we do something with 75 Barker to make sure that we're acknowledging that we might need some parking space for that as well. So, yeah. The only thing that I would ask is, and I don't mind having the, um, giving them the reservation for it, but I would like to keep the reservation within the time having that signage show that there's the time that you're open. So if you're only open until from noon until midnight, that that people have the opportunity to use the same um, that same uh, uh, parking in the morning if they have to. So uh, you know that we don't limit uh, the amount of people that could use that parking at any given time. Yeah, I'm not sure about the hours of operation yeah. yet. But I just say I would just say if if you're not going to be open in the morning just not restricted only those spots just for you for the whole time yeah. yes. that we put a time and on it there are regulations i mean when you're building there's there's code they're going to say you need this many spots I think depending it's on your size area. no handicap spots what's that handicap, handicap spots yeah. not in that area no the 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 the, the downtown the downtown um, uh, code is ex is uh, parking exempt. But don't they have I the ADA? I find it hard to believe it's yeah. not in Ann Arbor. Handicap. You have to have handicap. Well, I'm is not saying I'm not, not exempt. Handicap spots. Right. I'm just saying there's seven spots up front. Yeah. No, but there there is like so. Th then you're saying you're being required though. That was how you started. That you need to prove you have designated spots, and you're saying there is no, no I, I never code said I needed that determines that. Well, I think just so from why your then can't it just be use the community parking? You're welcome to use that. I mean, where's the hang up there? there there'll be plenty of parking in that well, lot. This is a big investment, and mm -hmm. I need to make sure that maybe some other company comes in that spot and their employees or whatever they do takes up most of that parking. Then what am I supposed to do? Yeah, well, what are He's we making supposed an investment. to do? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a kind of a conundrum. On, on my behalf, mm -hmm. and if something changes with the parking that could be a detriment to my business and investment, I won't do it. But it's possible you know? that that, if we give away that parking, it could be a detriment to the community well, business it, also, right? Other well, businesses. Well, yeah, if you guys didn't. I mean, I'm not. Property, I am totally for this. I mean, right. One hundred percent. I'm just kind of playing devil's advocate. As, as so a we think of all the you know, different. I don't see investment coming into that downtown area if there is no parking. 
Right. You know, so if anything was to happen with 75 Barker and you guys would lose the city parking, it's pretty much kissing any business coming in goodbye. You know, because there is no parking on the streets, there's really no parking by the water or anything like that. So, you know, parking is very important and this is kind of why it's taken this long from when we bought the property to make a decision here. Uh, and I, me and my partner still have fears about parking. Um, even uh, with a designated guys. parking from you guys, it, there still are some issues, you know, that, you know, that we are, consider, you know, scared of. And I'm sure that, all that, businesses thinking about locating in that area would have the exact same concerns, mm, that they I, would I, have I, parking and they, they, they might go away. I mean, there's no question, but there always has to so be one. Yeah. And there always has to be a start of a revitalization. And you don't know what's going to happen two years from now if we, let's say we do, in fact, uh, dedicate parking to the driftwood and their redevelopment. And somebody comes in and you have another use that you would love to have that comes in. Maybe they're there, maybe then at that point there's enough desire for them to be there because there's already enough, uh, you know, uh, um, um, already enough uh, activity that they buy a, a lot or an adjoining house and tear it down. The number one thing that revitalizes small downtowns is entertainment, food, and liquor, mm -hmm. okay? I mean, I, I know it sounds funny, but it's true. You wanna go to Brighton, it's because you're gonna drink, you're gonna eat, you're gonna enjoy a Saturday night. Guys, I, 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 it's ultimately the board's decision and there's a lot of things to think about, but you got an existing business that wants to revitalize the area with a strong use that's an entertainment focused use, which is what you want in downtown Whitmore Lake. And I, I, if there's an opportunity to, to help, I, I, I think it's an opportunity to take. I agree 100%. And now that we have the Van, and, uh, the Van Curler property, it's not like we're giving away really our own. And, and I agree with you, Kathy. If there's piece, a restaurant you know? that mm -hmm. comes in two years from now, it's, it's going to be one of those situations where we may not have the availability to do this again. I would rather take the opportunity today to look towards revitalization than to say no to an opportunity which may then not, then there's nothing creating the critical mass to make improvements. So what do you need from us tonight, Somer? Um, I guess a commitment for designated parking. I would like to know how much more parking you guys could add. Just uh, whether it's designated for me or not, but just to know what is capable out there, you know? What if another business comes in, you know, or doesn't want to come in because of that lot? Just knowing that, hey, it's, let's say it's 40 cars now, if you guys expand, that makes 60, 70, 80 cars. Then I know that, you know, it could handle the growth. You know, my place could take off, it might not, but it would be nice to know that if it did take off and was very successful, the parking is available if needed. Okay. Uh, I think if, if, if I can just briefly, uh, I think just because this is so loose at this point in terms of what the what legal shape such an agreement could take and, you know, Howard's got a bunch of work to do to figure out what parking is available. I think at this point, just sort of a direction from the board that this is something that you'd like for Howard and I to explore with Somer is a, about probably as far as you could go at this point, just because we don't have. I would like to have you explore. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead. That's, uh, that's right. what I was going to make the uh, motion to have Howard and our legal I don't uh, even think team you, do to we explore. Need a motion? Do you need a motion, Howard? No. Just direction. Dur or direction. No. Okay. All right. But I wanted to make sure you guys were okay. okay They're over with. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yep. Let's go. Fully. Um, okay. Sober. Thank you. I appreciate how you're doing. And right. <laughs> thank, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, that takes us to our second call to the public. Is there anyone here that would like to speak? Come on up. Good evening. Um, sounds great. I'm excited about what uh, you got going on here with Somar and uh, the, um, the Driftwood Marina and whatnot. Sounds exciting. Um, I want to go back to agenda item number three. We're talking about the parking, the uh, sidewalk. Um, I did a little bit of walking around Emerald Circle. It's up there near, um, what was I say, west of 23, uh, north of Barker? It's Northfield Estates. Okay. Um, some people when they were saying they would like a sidewalk continued from there towards downtown. We've been working on it. Oh, I'm working sorry. On it. So I just wanted to. I can't hear you. 
Um, I, I'm referring to uh, some residents that I talked to in, would you call it Northfield Estates? that uh, they mentioned about a sidewalk that got started but didn't get finished that would have taken them, who a lot of them are lower income whatnot, and have bicycles and kids and whatnot, in towards downtown. So their concern was we'd like the sidewalk finished. I didn't know exactly what they're referring to, but since you're talking about sidewalks and whatnot, I just wanted to just go ahead and add that to tonight's discussion. That's about it, and like I say, have a wonderful evening, and good luck everybody who's running for uh, trustee and uh, clerk, and. All of us are fun position supervisor and treasurer. Good luck and have a wonderful evening. Great, thank you. Uh, anyone else? All right, takes us to board member comments. Wayne? You had something I know? Hmm? Go I would like to remind people to uh, get and study your ballot. Uh, do not vote for Republican and the Democrat, it's like you can only vote for one. If you if you mix your ballot, your ballot will be thrown away. And uh, I would like to be able people to study it, be part of the system, uh, and uh, it will be voting one week from today. And uh, good luck to everybody that's running. Uh, that's number one. Number two. Uh, Howard Fink has moved out of the township. I could not stand the tax base here. So i just like to let everybody know What was that. the last comment? Howard Fink has moved out of the township. He could not stand the tax base here. <laughs> that has not, uh, That is totally disrespectful, Wayne. You have been out of order all night, and now you are rude and, and insulting. Oh, I was pretty rude for you to move out and not tell us how it. You know, you've been wanting to move this for meeting. For everybody who would like to know, I, sorry. No, go ahead. I move. I I live. I still live in Whitmore Lake. I live on the Green Oak side of Whitmore well, Lake. Well, that's not that's not Northfield no, Township. No, that's absolutely right. And it, it is Whitmore Lake Mail. Anyway, Whitmore Lake Township. Whitmore Lake uh, Wayne, no, you no, you no, wanted no. this meeting to move along because you're not feeling good, and we've been here a long no, time. I, no, I just okay. He's and not Northfield we're not gonna no. I would have thought he would let us know. Okay. Uh, anyone else for board member comments? Yes, Jay. Oh. So, um, I, and I'm going to read this. Um, I normally do turn it on. I normally do not take uh, the township meetings for political grandstanding, but I think um, since the Northville Neighbors Flyer has been mentioned, I do uh, feel that I need to have a disclaimer on my part. Um, the current CRGN and Northville neighbors have endorsed my candidacy as a township trustee incumbent um, for the next election. And I am not a member, nor do I participate in any special uh, group. I have not asked for their endorsements. And the only reason that I am running again is because I believe in our community and I believe that our community needs to thrive. That is the only reason. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anyone else? I kind of do. I, I just wanted to speak to this that went out as well. At first I was really upset about reading it because it is a huge, huge twist of truth. There's some seeds of truth in everything, but um, actually as I read through it, I'm th sitting here looking at it and I thought to myself, everything on here we've kind of been responsive to the public and everything that we've done. Um, we have not borrowed $3 million for a sewer plant. Um, our sewer plant does not have enough capacity for our residents and our obligations, and we do have obligations out there. That's why we're talking about an expansion. It, this says we have enough. We do not. Um, we gave away 672,000 tax giveaway as a gift to a company. For a company that's coming into our township that's going to increase um, our viability, uh, I, I don't understand why that is a bad thing. Uh, tax abatements are very common when you're bringing new businesses into, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I just want to add the majority of that 670000 does not go to Northfield Township. It goes to the state and, and, and other right. taxing jurisdictions. Right. And then 600000 in added bureaucracy. Um, the previous board actually structured it so that we, they wanted a township manager. We hired Howard, and he's done things that uh, probably are 
a supervisor, clerk, or whoever that would have come into that place would not have been able to do without the same experience and background and knowledge. And the things he brings to this, people don't even, to our community, people don't even think of, but he has that background to know that these things are available to us, plus contacts that he has as well. Um, the the $52,000 in pure waste was totally responsive to the community. When people came to our planning commission meetings, um, and I've been listening to them for seven, eight years now, they sat out there and they said, I can't hear, I can't hear, the lighting's horrible. Um, it, the, we had to do something to make it more um, uh, easier for the pe people than community to participate as well. We had trouble hearing them, they had trouble hearing us, and it wasn't the mics, they kept saying we placed the mics. We got new equipment, we put in walls, we put in ceilings, we have new lighting, it, this is a good place for people to come and listen. And, and, and we have not had anybody complaining about it except these people. Um, the other is the sewer fund, pure, or the sewer fund, pure, oh, the bonds. Um, I, want, I haven't seen any figure that shows that we lost $450,000 because of the sale of these bonds. What I think they're looking at is possible future if we hung on to it. That must be the crystal ball that Trustee Otto was talking about last time when we met that um, you can't see into the future. We could lose much more than that or less than that or none of it, or that, but we didn't lose $450,000. Also, that Munivest company was being investigated by the FBI. The FBI actually came to this office um, previous to this board and was asking questions about um, the investments and because the owner was actually indicted for a Ponzi scheme. So of course we're concerned there's a risk to our public's tax dollars and, the, and how it's being used. So that what we decided to do as this board is to make sure there was no risk involved in that money and that's being responsive to our public. Everything this board has done over the last three and a half years has been in the interest of the public don't expect everybody to agree with the things that we do, but we certainly don't deserve this kind of garbage. Thank you, Janet. <laughs> Mr. Wagner, did you have something else that you'd wanna? Yeah, yeah a couple of things. Um, uh, for our missing 13 year or 16 year old girl, we were able to find her and return her to her mother uh, this morning, so that was good news. And then also while we have uh, Deputy Chief Bishop here, he doesn't like accolades very a lot, but uh, about uh, four weeks ago on his, his uh, full-time job working for AT&T, he was working down in Augusta Township and happened to be around the corner of a 10-year-old boy that was severely mauled by a dog and was listening to the radio. And Chris responded down in Augusta Township and uh, was instrumental in saving that little boy's life. And um, I think he got some accolades from his AT&T job. And uh, just I just wanted to recognize him for that. He, he did that, it was very nice. So, thank you. Anyone else? Um, I have just uh, something real quick. Just wanted to thank everyone who voted for me four years ago. It was a pleasure serving you. Hopefully I can have your vote again. Please remember to vote next Tuesday, August 2nd. And also I just wanted to clarify from one of our uh, call to the public speakers, uh, his, it sounded like he um, saying I get paid $50,000 a year. Uh, my pay is $12,500 a year, totaling 50,000 for four years. All right. Um, and that is the that same goes for the treasurer and the clerk. All right. Um, if we have nothing else, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank you.